thanks everyone for joining. Um, I'll go over what Arakis V2 is and what they've built on top of their current version, which was Arakis V1. Um, it's not very technical, but it should help you guys give an overview of basically what they're trying to achieve by shipping out this new version. Um, and feel free to ask any questions at any time. So I'll just share my screen. Um, right. So basically, uh, Arrakis V2 is um, a successor to their original version. And it's a market making infrastructure which is built on top of Uni V3. Um, and their main thing with this was to allow the execution of more sophisticated market making strategies um, on Uni V3. Uh, so they're trying to target uh, more sophisticated LPs and maybe more institutional LPs as well through this. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background on what Arrakis V1 is, um, for uh, those who might not know. Uh, so Arrakis was essentially a spin-off from Gelato Network, and it started in early 21, uh, so two years old now. Uh, they wanted to make uh, LPing more uh, easy and more democratized on Uni V3. Um, and um, yeah, basically, they wanted to make uh, DEXs um, their primary trading venue. So they did a few things with Arrakis V1. The first thing is that they made the Uni, Uni V3 positions fungible. Uh, which allowed them to, anyone who was holding the ERC20 tokens could see uh, the percentage of the pool that they own at any time. And they could also use these positions on lending pools. Uh, so they could, uh, they basically use them on Aave, Compound, and all these other lending pools. Um, so they made the Uni V3 positions fungible. And at that time, you could uh, essentially create up to two positions. So you could create a position, you could rebalance it at any time. And then you could also create an additional position uh, at a different range. So that's what Arrakis V1 allowed. Um, the rebalancing could be automated. So you could set in parameters and you could do it uh, just through sort of like some strategy. And uh, they allowed the formation of these walls, which could be private or public. So this is more in terms of who could deposit into these walls. Um, private walls would be only for whitelisted addresses, and public walls would be for anyone to deposit funds into. Um, and the whole thing, I mean, is inspired by the Dune universe, so they keep using their um, like spice tokens and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, so that's on V1. Um, any questions so far? Uh, what is uh, they use it for some internal like I haven't really looked into their tokenomics. I basically just looked into the product. Uh, but uh, they use it for their internal like token. Uh, I, I guess it's their governance token or something. Okay, I'll take a look. Um, okay. Uh, so then uh, essentially they did uh it make a small ones big ones and they came up with some key results that most of which we already know that uh market makers are skeptical of providing liquidity on uni v3 because they can't hedge uh impermanent loss they're not able to use their uh strategies that they are um using for order books. Um, and some of the protocols said that they're not able to use their inventory in an effective way. Uh, they said that, for example, some of the larger market makers that they spoke to, uh, they were also, instead of market making on decentralized exchanges, they were mostly doing the taker side. So they were running our board. So they were doing some other taker side strategies on um, Uni V3. Uh, because they were uh, not able to run their high-frequency strategies on top of it. So um, 
this was sort of like their um, they were trying to solve these problems essentially when they had um, Arrakis V2 in mind. Uh, so before I get into how Arrakis V2 actually works, just uh, the, some things remain the same. So it still consists of peripheral contracts that interact with Uni V3. Um, so everything that's everything that Arrakis V2 can do, you can do directly on Uni V3. It just makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more automated. Um, and it primarily enables complex market making strategies. Um, there, V2 is mostly targeted towards market making volatile pairs um, versus stable pairs. So they, they allow market making for both, like stables as well as volatile pools. Um, they have deployed on, I mean, in December, they said that they will be deploying in two days, but I haven't checked if they've already deployed on Ethereum, Polygon, Optimism, and Arbitrum. Um, and uh, for now, it's going to be fully open source, so permissionless. So anyone can create walls using Arrakis V2, but um, they will not be verifying who the manager or who the owner of that vault is. They will only display on their UI the vaults that are created by Arrakis team itself. Uh, but anyone can create it um, and start to market it if they want. Um, and it, the other thing was on their fundraise, which they announced along with the launch of Arrakis V2 as well. Uh, but they actually closed this round in September, but they didn't announce it. So they raised $4 million uh, through a SAFT, uh, like a few token sale, essentially, um, from a bunch of marquee investors. Um, yeah. So getting into how it actually works. Um, so basically, it's uh, it does two things that are different from the original version. It allows the manager to manage as many positions as they want in a pool. So there's effectively an array of ranges that you can set. Um, and it manages like as many positions as the vault manager wants. So it's an arbitrary number of positions that you can have on UniV3 through this. Um, and it also allows you to manage the inventory and payload. What that means is that uh, firstly, overall, you don't have to deploy all of the funds that are there in the vault as the vault manager. You can keep some aside and you can in, uh, deploy some and you can play around with it. And within all of these multiple positions created, you can also um, decide how the weight will be distributed across them. Um, so that's uh, these are the two main things that the, that Arrakis V2 allows. Um, there are three key roles in any of the worlds. There is the manager who will do the actual management of the LP strategy. Uh, the access is same as before, public and private, depending on who can deposit funds. And um, the owner essentially has complete access to the world. So the owner can define um, some parameters like which pool to deposit into, what will be the fee structure of the manager, etc. The walls, just like V1, are fully composable and non-custodial. Uh, the manager will have a single interface to see all of the global positions, where the funds are deployed, what their distribution is. Um, the manager can move the funds in and out of Uni, Uni V3, uh, but cannot withdraw. So the depositors kind of have to trust uh the manager to manage their funds let's say it's a hedge fund or um any other institution uh so they will be tr still trusting their funds but uh I, the manager cannot easily rug pull uh and then um the creation of walls either public or private is uh permissionless and the depositors receive erc20 tokens to represent their position same as v1 um and same as v1 you can use those uh positions to uh as collateral in lending markets or for any other purpose and which makes it highly composable and capital efficient um right so i'll just discuss in detail how the multiple concentrated liquidity positions actually work um so basically what they're saying is that uh when you're constructing a combination of LP positions, uh, you can create strategies on Uni V3 that are similar to a club exchange. Um, so you can have multiple uh, limit orders together that form a curve. So basically, the 
uh, your combined strategy can look similar to this uh, at the current price. And that's kind of what the team had in mind uh, while developing Arrakis V2 is to make the experience um, similar to a club. Um, and this is managed through an array of ranges that can be set and changed accordingly in the vault itself. Um, the other thing is that you could also, so one vault will deposit into a single pool of any two tokens. So let's say it's each USDC, but it can switch between different fee tiers of the same token pair. Uh, so you could switch between the 0.1%, 0.05%, et cetera, fee um, of the same token pair. And this, they assume, will allow LPs to maximize the returns and the trade off between high volume and low fee pools. So, for example, um, for stables uh, close to the peg price, you can add a lot of liquidity on the uh, just close to the peg. Uh, so that way you have low risk of DPEG, but also low returns or, or low trading uh, fee that's coming in. Uh, but further away from the peg price, you can add more liquidity on the higher uh, fee uh, pools, uh, basically taking on like, uh, more risk and more rewards. So this allows, uh, essentially, what they say is that uh, it can allow a vault manager to mimic a dynamic fee AMM, where you can seamlessly switch between the fee tiers depending on whatever volatility or any other um, or trading fee coming in or the current trading volume. Um, so based on those factors, you can switch between fee pairs. Um, so that's the other thing that they allow. And uh, the third thing is the inventory management, which I mentioned earlier. So basically what they're saying is you're not forced anymore to deploy all of the liquidity that's in the world. Um, some of it can just sit idle and you can dynamically inject and eject liquidity as, um, as you please, uh, which I guess is to... Uh, well, I mean, the team said that you, you're able to dodge toxic order flow and uh, improve risk management. Um, I guess you can, I guess this allows you to hedge for volatility. So if you want to, um, yeah, I mean, if, 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 if the vault manager feels that there will be a directional move in the market and there will be high and permanent loss, then you can it um, eject liquidity and then if the vault manager feels that it will stay the same then you can inject liquidity again so this sort of allows you to um kind of do what uh like basically if you take a look at LPing as um you know betting uh that there won't be a major price movement that it allows you to move liquidity remove liquidity when there is a directional price move that you foresee um and then the last one is cross protocol rebalancing. So essentially, while when the rebalancing happens on UniV3, they would have to change uh, the inventory mix, the inventory composition. Uh, if you are trying to add liquidity at a range where the inventory composition required is different. So instead of having to do so on UniV3 itself, uh, they have a router with various whitelisted texts, I guess they would be integrating with one inch and the likes. And that allows you to do that swap of inventory composition uh, with the best um, liquidity source or the least slippage possible. Uh, so it sort of just optimizes the whole process a little bit more. Um, yeah, any any questions so far? Uh, my question is related to the uh, the. Could you go back to the the slide uh, with that uh, Uniswap versus Club? Uh, yeah, this one. So it sounds like they mentioned the their liquidity distribution will be more like the one to the right. Uh, that sounds like they're going to need to have a lot of different ranges, but. Didn't you mention at the beginning that their each of their road will only manage at most two uh, two ranges? Oh, that was V one. So the V one oh. was 
like this, where you could have one range and then possibly another one sitting on top of it. Uh, this is the key change in the V2, where you can have an arbitrary number of ranges. And the manager will be in charge of uh, managing those ranges. Yeah. Got it. Uh, do they mention any uh, gas compensation? Because it's going to cost some money for like uh, moving the ranges, right? They don't mention any gas composition. Uh, compensation, no. Got it. OK, thanks. OK. Um, yeah, so moving on, this is just um, the various permissions or the various kind of vaults that you can have uh, from a permissions perspective. Uh, so if you look at the manager role, uh, there can be three kinds. Uh, one is trustless, which is entirely on chain. Uh, the manager is a smart contract in itself. And this is essentially used for public walls where anyone can audit it and anyone can just uh, deposit funds in an automatic manner. Uh, then uh, they have an externally managed uh, option where the manager can be assigned through a gnosis safe or through, uh, yeah, based usually through some sort of a multi sig uh, to a professional. And this could be uh, for market makers. And in this case, most of the strategies would be. Uh, a run off chain and only the execution will happen on chain. Uh, and then lastly, you have the self managed vaults, which are primarily for individuals or prop trading funds. Uh, again, the strategies would be run off chain and the whole thing can be entirely private. So they will just be using the V2 infrastructure, uh, but control uh, all access um, and also useful for uh, protocols that want to manage their own uh native liquidity through arakis v2 um right so this um they have uh they've deployed their contracts which anyone can see um they don't have any fee so arakis v2 in itself doesn't take any haircut but there is a fee parameter for the manager that can be set by the owner so uh any manager can set their own uh, fee models as they please um and they can, yeah, as I mentioned before, they can manage their liquidity in and out of UniV3. So, yeah, owner can configure the main things that the owner can configure are um, how much liquidity. So, restricted mint will basically restrict how much deposits or they can take, which also means how many ERC tokens they will mint, uh, which pools they will deposit into which swap routers they're okay to use to do the swap if they need to change the inventory composition and of course who the manager is um and they have four key contracts um i haven't got into a lot of detail on how they work but essentially arakis v2 is the main contract which does the lp management system the factory one deploys the instances of the walls the resolver is the main one that manages the payload so both the inventory management, as in how much to deploy and how much to keep aside, as well as the the, the weight weight distribution between the ranges that are um, that are active or that have that that will hold the liquidity um, is through the resolver and helper is just for anyone to query uh, the public walls and get uh, information out of it. Okay, um, so this is pretty much it about Arakis V two. Along with Arakis V2, they also launched a product called Palm, which is for uh, DAOs and protocols to seed liquidity. Uh, this, I think, I haven't looked into a lot of details on how Balancer works, but I think it's similar to that, where you start providing liquidity with 5%, uh, 95% um, mm -hmm. weight, and over time, it rebalances more to 50-50, so it allows you to uh build more liquid pools without directly having to sell uh the native token uh so this is the first product that they've launched along with it uh which is open for any protocol to use uh this they are hoping to target protocols and uh especially the younger protocols that can uh uh, get some liquidity on UniV3 through this. And they also want to demonstrate the kind of stuff that you can do with Arakis V2 through this. 
Uh, so I'll just go over like how this actually works. This is just this is just the Palm strategy. Anyone can build their own strategies. Uh, but essentially, what Palm does is this: you start with ninety-five five percent. So ninety-five percent, let's say perp token, five percent USDC, and you create a pool. Uh, Palm will create three positions. One is within range. So this is the current price P. Uh, and the first position basically has a mix of PERP and USDC. Then there is a bigger position uh, which has more weightage. This includes, this is only, this is to the right of the price. So this only includes, uh, this is made up entirely of PERP. Uh, and the smaller position is made up entirely of USDC. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that if the price only goes in one direction, only upwards, only downwards, then this does nothing. This cannot help you seed liquidity in any way. But normally that doesn't happen. Even if there's a general trend, there's going to be up and down and up and down. And with each up and down, it rebalances the this 95.5 mix a little bit. How it does that is if the price increases, so if the price goes to this dotted line within R, uh, the protocol will do a few things. It will um, close this L position. So this USDC, the smaller, US, the smaller amount of USDC will go back into the inventory. Um, this uh, amount of perp in the M position will get converted to USDC. And also more perp will get converted to USDC within R. But it will open another position to its right, which is bigger than the one that was closed. So it will deploy more, um, more native token into the liquidity pool. So it, it creates a bigger position to the right. Then if the price goes back, and now it goes back all the way from this point to this point, to the new smaller position. In this case, what happens is, um, all of the larger positions, uh, the, the bigger chunk of the larger positions liquidity gets converted to USDC. So more perp gets injected into the system and you open another small position with the native token. So essentially, I don't know if that was clear at all, but basically every time the price moves left, you put a small amount of USDC and every time the price goes right, you put a large amount of perp. So over time, if the price reverts to original, the, pr the pool composition will have more base token than the original 5%. And this mechanism is what they use, what they say that over time uh, will rebalance the pool to 50-50 um, without actually having to directly sell the tokens, uh, sell the native uh, tokens. uh yeah that's that's basically an overview of what palm is and the other thing is that the other example that they've given on how one might use um Arrakis is the right one we already saw in the other diagram basically small positions uh similar to club and larger spreads mean deeper liquidity this is an example of uh the dynamic mimicking the dynamic fee AMM and how you can do so on stable pairs. Uh, basically, again, so the, for the smallest fee tier, 0 0.01 fee tier, uh, you have the maximum liquidity at exactly the peg. And then further away from the peg, uh, you have wider liquidity in, um, in the larger fee tiers. So basically, what you're saying is that my liquidity will earn more if there is on at price ranges where there's likely to be less uh, volume. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all. Yeah. So when they mentioned uh, cross chain support. Are they aiming to use that to hedge against the Uniswap V3 positions, or are they treating them as equal to the Uniswap positions? Basically, are, are they trying to move uh, to other types of decks? 
no uh no they haven't they've been pretty committed to building on top of uni v3 and building infrastructure on uni v3 uh the cross the cross protocol are you referring to the cross protocol rebalancing uh yes yeah so they are saying that that's only for swapping um yeah only only if you need to swap if the manager needs to swap some positions but for adding liquidity they haven't said anything about building infrastructure on top of any other protocol i see got it thanks okay um if there are no other questions just uh, the last closing comment um is that there are a few other uh, protocols that have launched in the past few months um which i haven't really gone into in detail but it just seems like uh, most of them are trending towards building infrastructure that's uh mimicking order books in one way or another um and there's one called carbon which we had spoken about in the other call earlier uh is also trying to do pretty much exactly what Aricus is tries to do on the periphery carbon tries to build that into the amm layer itself so uh it allows multiple ranges and uh liquidity to be deployed exactly in the ranges of choice for the manager and it also tries to remove the necessity that if you buy at one price that's if you uh, provide sell side liquidity on one price and buy side liquidity on a different price um and that's what they're calling their asymmetric text they haven't really built it they've just um written about it yet and they the team says that they are working towards launching it soon um but yeah that's pretty much it Okay, um, yeah, I think we can wrap it up if there are no other questions.